we're looking at the GWM Capital uh, case study on private markets. We'll uh, read the first question and jump into the reading. If GWM Capital decides to invest in Pinnacle Industries, which of the following investment strategies would be most appropriate? A, a leverage buyout, B, a venture debt, or C, a leverage loan. GWM Capital, a leading private equity firm, is exploring a strategic move to acquire Pinnacle Industries, a publicly traded company known for its innovative manufacturing solutions. Um, Pinnacle Industries has recently faced financial challenges due to mismanagement and is currently undervalued compared to its industry peers. Recognizing an opportunity, GWM Capital is considering several investment strategies. Crucially, Pinnacle Industries' existing debt includes several high-yield bonds protected by a change of control clause. So if uh, GWM Capital, it's a private equity firm, um, and then a lot of these characteristics are kind of make for a perfect private equity target. So they face financial challenges due to mismanagement, um, currently undervalued relative to peers. So what a private equity firm will typically do here is they're going to come in, they're going to buy out the whole firm, they're going to shake up uh, management, bring in their own executives, um, probably fire a lot of people, to be honest, um, and then uh, get things moving operationally to kind of bring the value of the company back to, to more in line with industry peers. Um, so looking at these three options, how they would do this, uh, leverage buyout, this is where they're going to use debt to basically acquire the whole company. That is um, one way that a private equity firm would typically buy a publicly traded company. Let's make sure we can rule out B and C though. Venture debt, um, this is going to be used for early stage companies and kind of like it says it's debt. It doesn't involve taking kind of control of the company so that we can rule that out. And then C, leverage loan. Um, they may use a leverage loan for some of their financing, but a leverage loan in itself isn't going to lead to them having control over the company, which is what they're going to need um, for this type of investment. So we'll go with answer A. Question two. GWM Capital's plan to govern the new manufacturing facility project through a special purpose entity is most likely designed to... All right, let's read a little bit more since we haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, we stopped right here. Additionally, GWM Capital is evaluating a major infrastructure project involving the construction of a new manufacturing facility for Pinnacle Industries. GWM Capital plans to use a special purpose entity, SPE, for this investment. Um, GWM Capital measures performance. Okay. So uh, we're looking at basically the purpose of using an SPE and what is it designed to do. So let's look at these answers. A, limit the liability of investors uh, to those associated with the project. Um, this sounds like it's probably our answer, and it is typically what a SP is designed to do. SP is going to basically take these assets and put them into this new entity, um, and then it kind of isolates those assets um, and limits the liability related to the company's regular operations. Um, uh, all right, so let's look at B then. Make sure we can rule out B and C. B, ensure the investors capture their share of returns from the project. Um, this is going to be determined by kind of the investor debt and equity terms, not necessarily the SPE itself. Um, so the investors in the SPE, whether they're debt, equity, or some other, and what kind of percentage of the SP they own will determine that, not the SPE itself. Uh, C, protect the value of the investment at the end of the concession agreement. And SPE does not protect the value of an investment. Uh, so we can rule out C as well and go with A. Question three. Which of the following best explains why GWM Capital measures, perfor measures performance using metrics like RVPI and TVPI for its private market investments? All right, let's read this last paragraph. GWM Capital measures private investment performance using metrics such as RVPI and TVPI. So we basically need to kind of just uh, find the answer that says why we would use RVPI and TVPI maybe relative to something else. Um, okay, so A, to benchmark against public, mar public market performance, that is going to be incorrect. Um, these measures um, aren't going to help us measuring against public, public market performance. We'd want to use the public market equivalent metric or measure to kind of measure against public performance, not these metrics. Uh, B, to assess periodic effects of price appreciation. So periodic... Price appreciation is going to be a lot more short term 
and that's not really synonymous with um, private investment performance in general. Um, so these metrics probably aren't relevant for that. I'm going to rule it out, but maybe we can come back to it. And let's read C. To account for periods of negative and positive cash flows, this is going to be correct. And so those periods of positive and negative cash flows are going to come from um, negative cash flows will be when we're getting capital called. And so we have capital going out and then positive cash flows will be when we have the distributions coming back in. Um, so the TVPI is total value to paid in. So that's going to take into account kind of the existing investments and what value those have that's kind of remaining to be paid out, which is going to be that RVPI. And then it's also going to take into account um, the distributions received so far um, relative to those negative cash flows, which is kind of that, which is a capital call or paid in capital. So we'll go with answer C. Question four, which of the following ratios would GWM Capital most likely use to measure the investor's unrealized return on investment for Pinnacle Industries? Uh, TVPI, um, so TVPI is going to be RVPI plus DPI. Um, RVPI is going to be our unrealized returns, thus our answer. And then DPI is going to be distributions paid out so far. So if we want to look at the unrealized, what's left over, that's going to be um, residual value. Um, answer B.